Welcome back to another nice greasy episode of the Stripe Sweater Podcast, where the best time to listen is all the time. I'm one half of your co-hosts, a little sausage, Zach Main. And I'm Alexander Beardsley. I don't make them, I just sell them. That's right, and we're here with episode 19 of the Stripe Sorter Podcast, featuring Fools in April and Neptune's Spatula. Heck yeah. Very memorable episodes. Uh, we got another holiday episode on our hands. <clears throat> it's funny, because the, of the three holiday episodes in season one, we get Valentine's Day, April Fool's Day, and... Halloween. Halloween. Okay, so Halloween, okay, kind of a bigger holiday, but those other they two are like Yeah, they didn't lame. do a Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year's or um, I guess that would be They went it. with the lesser holidays. I guess they also did Opposite Day, but I don't know if that counts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not one that we actually celebrate. It doesn't, there's no specific uh, Opposite Day recognized in America, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, we should uh, maybe campaign. Yeah, be fun. Tell people to tackle us. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, go on to our uh, Kickstarter for... Uh, or No, it wouldn't be Kickstarter. It would be... What's the petition one? Make Ch- a change. Change.org? <laughs> yeah, go on to our change.org campaign that we have for making Opposite Day a real holiday in America. <laughs> Please. We need signatures. Yeah, otherwise we'll kill them. <laughs> so today is a uh, a very sour day. Not a, you know, it's we just had a storm go by. A couple of them actually. It's kind of like still going on. I think a little bit. Yeah, and worst of all, <clears throat> Liverpool won the Champions League. Boo, Liverpool. Yeah. So I don't know if you know this, but Liverpool is Manchester United's rival. Makes sense. It's not me. Manchester City. Okay. People would think because they're in the same city. Man, you, but, Man City, right. But Man City uh, just became like a good team like five years ago. Okay. Whereas Manchester United and Liverpool have had, you know, since pretty much the beginning of time, have <laughs> had sure. huge rivalries and different... Right. Mashing a long, a long seated rivalry, yeah, exactly. So it kind of sucks, but there's a thing called the treble, uh, which is when a Premier League team wins their well, I guess it's I guess it's any team <clears throat> wins their uh, their league title and the Champions League title, which is all the best teams of Europe. And if they would have won it, they were like one point away from winning it, which would have really, really sucked. <laughs> Because sure. Liverpool has never won a league title in our lifetime. Yeah. And I think it's hilarious. Because fuck them. Well, you know what? There's you know a what's first funny time too. for everything, and nothing stays the same, Zachary. You know what's funny, too, is that apparently we do have people who live in the United Kingdom that listen. Sure. I wonder how many of them are Some are in Manchester. You know, you can click on it, and it'll show you exactly. There, I think yeah. Manchester is the highest one. That's funny, because I actually don't have any tie to the city other than that I've been a huge fan for years and he loves have them. a tattoo. He has a tattoo on his chest like he's wearing a jersey at all times. My only tattoo, and I show it, obviously, in the wrestling ring yeah. every night. I'm like an advertisement for the club. He loves Man U. You know what's weird too? Sometimes I talk to people, like wrestling fans, and they like, they're like, "Oh yeah, you have a, you have a tattoo." I kind of didn't even notice. It's like, I don't know. It's kind of like weird because it is pretty prominent. I mean, yeah. it's on your chest. Mm-hmm. You know, I know. I mean, I have only the one, but yeah. mine's like baby. Nobody, and it's, nobody even knows about and it. And it's hidden under wrist tape. Generally, yeah. I mean, you don't see it when I wrestle, right? But I am, I'm. It's this, a cock and balls. This sounds kind of lame, maybe, but I do really want to have a shark tattoo at some point. Like um, a baby shark? No, Doo-doo? not or a baby tattoo? shark. But I was thinking, uh, just because of my recent history with uh, Jaws, the the book and movie, I was thinking, and the bone. Yeah, it'd be cool to uh, 
get the boat from that story tattooed on me. Uh, just or, because I I have I I do I I do have dreams about tattoos. I don't uh, ever. I mean, like I will never get them unless I get lucky and have a lot of money. Because realistically, mine will cost a lot of money, and I will want them to be, you know, top of the line, exquisite. Yeah, and a lot of famous people do that too. Where it's like, just oh well, now this guy is full sleeves in a day. Like right, holy cow, it's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, but no. uh I was thinking for a long time, I wanted to get a lot of Pokemon tattoos. Uh, I probably want less of them now, but I still, I really would like to get a Starmie tattooed on me, which is funny because we just saw a meme of Patrick mixed with Starmie, but I have a thing for Starmie. Um, I have a thing for water Pokemon in general. I have a thing for water in general. And Misty. So, uh, I mean, Misty's cool too, uh, <laughs> but I have a thing with sharks and, um, I think it'd be cool to get some sort of aquatic theme going down one whole side of my body and then get a earth theme on the other side. And I want to get a lot of animals. I want to get, plants. you know, plants and, and I will, I think drugs eventually. Yeah. I mean, maybe, uh, I guess with, oh, the, with opium where I, plants, obviously with where I said that we can't cut it out <laughs> without a weird, obscure cut. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> uh, we, uh, but yeah, no, I think that would be cool, and I think it'd be cool to somehow sort of sneak Pokemon into it because they're a big part of my interest in animals as well, especially like uh, a Bulbasaur. Which, which is, I mean, it's just strange that uh, you know, Pokemon, basically a whole universe of fake animals, would inspire interest in the real world because yeah. it's all based on real stuff for the most part. Um, or, you know, based on, but tweaked or whatever. I mean, obviously there's exceptions to that rule in Pokemon, but that's, what's beautiful about it. Anything can happen in the Pokemon universe. There can be a fucking ice cream Pokemon. There can be a fucking pokeball Pokemon, you know? Yeah. Or a God who controls everything. And especially the other gods in legendaries. Sure. That everyone just meets. But um, that's probably enough for a little opener. Soccer and Pokemon and animals. Um, and I've been going through a big time bird phase lately. Just want to get that out there uh, so that people <laughs> know. Because I only see it growing. Um, I'm going through a phase right now where all the fuck I want to do is learn about animals. Well, and you just had a strange experience with the bird. Yeah, I did. Uh, I guess I'll share that, you know, to commemorate this 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 moment that happened in my life. Uh, so it's on the Internet forever. So I was skateboarding the other day. I was feeling really down uh, in general. I was skateboarding and uh, cheering myself up a little bit. But I happened to skate by this bird right on my street. And it was just standing in the street. I skated right by it, not a few inches away from its face. And it didn't even fly away or anything. And I was like, what the heck is going on with this bird? And I go to check it out and, you know, I start touching it with my foot a little bit just to be like, hey, you know, are you okay? Uh, you know, I don't want to touch it with my hands in case of whatever. And it just was barely reacting. And it, it I'm thinking maybe it got hit by a car before hand but uh -huh. it didn't it wasn't obvious it looked totally normal so i was just like hey are you okay and i stayed with it for a few minutes just like and it was just kind of like twitching a little bit every so often which makes me think maybe it got hit by a car or something but it it looked in perfect condition and eventually i finally like kind of just gave it a nudge with my foot and it tried to fly away and it didn't get a foot off the ground before it sort of twirled out of control and it just died right in front of me. And it, and it was just done. It was gone. It, it was unbelievable. Like, and especially to be going through a bird phase yeah. for that to happen. Like I literally had like a moment with a bird and I was there. For, I was, I was the last soul, you know, our, yeah. our souls could like converged on this moment. And I was the last thing to be with it when it died. And that's and pretty crazy. What did you do with it? Anything? Well, I was going to grab it and give it a proper burial myself. Um, and I wish that I did get to do that, but the lady whose house in front of it was came out and I started talking to her and she was like, Oh yeah, I'll get it. And I was like, Oh, okay. 
you know so i just kind of yeah. let her do it but yeah. honestly i kind of wanted to have that moment with it because i am spiritual in that way and i believe that i don't know what message was being sent to me on that day but the universe was trying to tell me something um i i'm i believe in that type of stuff you know uh so it, it was an interesting experience but nonetheless it does i don't know you know uh, death is a part of life and without death, there is no life. So, you know, we have to cherish it while we're alive. And I know a lot of people out there are depressed and sad and unhappy with their lives. Um, and I understand and I've been there and you know what? I, I, I am there most of the time. Um, but that's okay, you know, and and that's part of that's part of life. You have to you have to try to deal with it. Um, and you know, if there is anyone listening that's struggling with depression, like I honestly urge you to reach out to me. You know where to find me, Ashton Waganda on the internet. Uh, we can talk about it because I I I would like to hear from you. Whatever, but you know what? Let's be happy now. This podcast is deeper than the city of rock bottom. It sure is. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I I just saw this thing for the first time. There's a type of bird that uh, it like it can get really crazy looking and like spread out its like shit and like spread out its shit. Yeah, it has like a big tail fin and it has like big tail wings. feathers. It like gets big and it like goes. <laughs> it it like screams like it's almost like a whistle noise okay. but it also is known to act like it's dead to stop a predator from going after its eggs it'll like go away from the eggs and act like it's dying huh what kind of bird is that uh my friend just talked about it i i don't remember that's my type of shit that i want to know about yeah um, I should have yeah, I figured should've out got it the last thing i wanted to say if you wanted it to be an obscure reference Get jaws on yourself somewhere, but the dude from Goldeneye. That's that, it. That'd be fun. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, cause I honestly, was waiting so long to just fit that little bit in. <laughs> I know. I honestly thought about Jaws from Golden or from. Uh, I mean, he I, he wasn't in the movie Goldeneye, I don't think, but he was in previous Bond films. He was a reoccurring character. In but Bond he was films. in the game, right? He was in the game, and that's Goldeneye. really the only way I know him because a lot of those you never ones, watched James never, Bond. Yeah, you know, I I think maybe I've watched some of Goldeneye, but never actually that I can remember. Dude. I know, but I know the whole movie. I mean, you probably do from whatever. I feel like it was on in the background in some things, but I played through that story an insane amount of times, sure. and I've seen clips. That I'm like invincible. It. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's Goldeneye. Um, Do they ever use the golden gun, though? Is it in that game? Or in the movie? I don't think so. It's That's not a, a real it's thing. It's just in The Man with the Golden Gun. That's a James oh. Bond film. Is it known for one shot killing people? Yeah, it's like, that's that's it. You Even if sh- you shoot him in the foot? You get shot, you're, it, it's like an instant it Probably thing. has poison in it. It's just, uh, I think the, the bullets gu- more than I the believe gun. the guy who has the gun is like deadly. It's, it's more so... The guy who has it, yeah. Then it is the gun, right. but then in, but the, in game, the game they yeah, made it's it just like a it's the gun, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like he's like deadly, and his fucking custom sweet gun is gold, you yeah. know. Um, but I don't actually know that for sure. I'm not a James Bond expert. I have seen probably like six of the movies, but there's like over twenty of them now. I'm pretty sure. So that's like less than any amount to even be able to talk about it as anything. But I like James Bonds were like, the world is not enough tomorrow. Never dies. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, golden eye was the one I probably watched the most. Um, but, uh, I did see world is not enough. I really, you know, what's funny about James Bond. What I remember more than anything from any of the movies is always the song at the beginning. Yeah, and that's, always great too. It because it's always so good. Like, and there are classics like "Live and Let Die" by Paul McCartney. Like, yeah. that's like a cl- considered like a classic song, and it's just a James Bond theme. Like, that's the only reason it exists. <laughs> like, or the song from Octopussy that uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg sings in TED at a Nora Jones concert. 
I don't remember that. No. Okay. I haven't. I only saw that movie like once, and it was a long time ago. So. It's really good, like sexy, like seventies movies. James Bond, like they were like sexy. They were like raunchy and action packed. Like it was. It's the, sex. It was like the cool, and guns. It was literally like the coolest shit back then. And technology. Like you can't imagine. And sex. How cool it is. That's from something. And obviously. guns. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just saying that's yeah. like what James Bond is. Ooh, did I tell you there's sex involved? Because <laughs> he's a man's man. <laughs> he kills people with guns. Ooh, yeah. And gadgets. Oh, I can't stay in thinking about it. <laughs> I got to see this movie. <laughs> But seriously, at the time, it would have been the dopest shit ever. Indeedy dandy. So, without further ado, Zachary, are you ready? <laughs> boom, boom. We just got tired of doing what you told us to do. That's a break, boy. Yeah. That's a break, little man. Break it down. Bing, 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 Get to get to get to the bomb bomb. You know who you're talking to? Bomb bomb. Aye aye, Alex. Watch me oh do my me. god, would watch you just me let do me do Watch me do me. Falcor. And we're back with Fools in April. Which, you know, we're two fools that were born in April. Yeah, we're fools in April for life. Yeah. Fa 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 life. This is the uh, this is the late nineties, early two thousands wrestling faction episode. And then isn't it like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the Filthy Animals theme song? Uh, I used to love it. Remind me. Uh, it was like, I think theirs was like the ashes to ashes and back to dust. And before I go, oh, believe I'm a bust. Yeah. It was sounds... like, Co- it was also like one of Conan's, I think. Okay. But like, and it was like, oh, we got fucking Ray Mysterio. And then also Billy Kidman. And then, and then, like, it was, it was a dumb thing. Oh, no shit. <laughs> so, uh, do you know about Mike Awesome's song? No. Oh, he has his own song, just oh, like yeah. the Steiners. Do you know about the Steiners song? No. Steinerized! No. You don't know that one? Uh-uh. Oh, dude. There's a good Steiner song, and there's a good Mike Awesome song. It's like, uh, dude. Uh, Rob, awesome! Rob, Rob Keto, came to- Robbie Keto knows all the words to it. He, it was so funny when we used to watch wrestling together because he was like singing along to it. It's like, I can't remember, but it's like, dropped with an awesome bomb. When you go down, you're never coming up or something like that. Yeah. It's like a lot better than the Rob Van Dam song from TNA that was just horrible. Van Terminator. <laughs> No, right? uh, the, like the, he's you know. back in Impact now. Did you yeah. see that? Mm-mm. Oh, I did actually. He got a huge contract. RVD's in Impact, and that's the song that he comes out to still now because that's his TNA song. And it is as much as I love Rob Van Dam, that is a trash song. It's a Rob Van Dam shame. Okay, because <laughs> One of a Kind by Breaking Point is like actually a really good entrance song. It's one of my favorites of all time, not even because I'm a huge mark for RVD. It's just a good song. It was it's just good song. better than almost yeah, any. Yeah, I see that look in your eyes. Makes you believe I'm one of a kind. One of a kind. 
It's so good. Hey. I know. It's hey. sweet. Yeah. And it was cool because it was like a play on his old, uh, uh, his original like Jim Johnson theme, which yeah. was actually a play on Walk by Pantera. Uh-huh. So right. it's funny. So just talk about the credits. Yeah. <laughs> I know. This is what sucks when we like, it seems like the later in the day we do it, the more, at least for me, the more apt I am to like be like, it's fun time. Let's just talk yeah. about shit. Like, okay, but down to business. Fools in April. Let's April- get down to business. Shut the fuck up, you son of a dick. I don't got to tell a lie around. What is this? Fools in April. April 1, 2000. 11 minutes long. Storyboard director, Aaron Springer. Storyboard artist, Eric Weiss. Was written by them too, along with Meriwether Williams. Animation director was Fred Miller. Creative director. Was still Derek Drymon. Dick Drymon. I don't know why I want to. I want to shorten his name to Dick. It's not how it works. Richard. It turns into. You just Dick. take out the era part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Dick De- Deck Drymon. Uh, anyway, this well, episode starts with a lovely shot of our beloved Gary the Snail sleeping, and his eye stalks are like all droopy, but his eyes are aw, closed. He's just. He's, in, he's just so wholesome. He's in and bliss. Peaceful. Yeah, just totally sleep, sleeping, sleepy. But he's not like that for long. Because SpongeBob wakes him up. And Gary's like, Meow? <laughs> and SpongeBob, what the heck is he talking about? He says, We're moving today? And Gary is like, Meow? <laughs> and uh, I love his eyeball. They like, he has uh, eyebrows for a second to express more like he's emotion. Like his eyebrows. Right. Like, what? Right, right. <laughs> to be yeah. like, it, yeah, like so he can. It's it's cute. Uh, and SpongeBob's like, "Yep, we're leaving home." Yeah, he's like, "We're gonna we're gonna be peasants." And he takes his food, and he's like, "You know, peasants don't eat food, Gary. You're gonna eat mashed up clam shells." Yes, and it's like, it it just is. It looks like a gross, um, like basic. Yeah, not earthy. appetizing at all. Um, yeah, I wanted and to... he puts on like a hat and fake beard. Correct. Too. Yeah, he puts on a purple hat and it's got like a patch on it to show that he's poor. And it also has a leaf on it as well. And uh, a beard as well. A white beard to show that he's old and poor. Yeah. And um, he's got that grave plot. He's got that grave plot right next to his dad. And it's right who's off already, the highway. And he's already dead probably. Yeah. Um. So, because uh, <laughs> he doesn't say my dad's grave plot, he says next to my dad. Like that's where my yeah, dad is. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. W- that's where my dad is. Right. That's where he lies. Yeah. Um. So always lying, Sponge- even in his death. Right. So Gary, um, once he realizes that SpongeBob is, you know, going to give him ground up clam shells, mashed up clam shells. Yeah. He's like really upset and. He's, he begins to cry. It it was really sad watching I, this. It again. actually hurts my little heart. Uh, yeah. Poor Gary. He's like, he's like a he's kind of like a cat. It's funny because he's a cat and he cries like a cat, but it's also like a human type cry of like continually like. Eh. Right. Well, it's Tom Kenny crying, right? <laughs> right. Right. It must be. Right. He did a good is. job of making it sound like an animal and have sympathy for it. I know. I really feel bad for Gary right there, but then. SpongeBob lets us know. April Fools. Yep, he was just April Fools and Gary. He gives Uh-oh. him his food back and Gary just meow and then he just eats. He's okay with yeah, it. Yeah, Gary's right? like, okay. He's like, I well, for thanks it. for the food. Yeah. You, you got, got me, me, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Dad. Oh, Dad, you you always fooling me. Yeah. So then SpongeBob, he's uh he's really thirsty and he goes to the fridge. And he says, this is an extreme thirst. Yeah. And it's a a ginormous pitcher of lemonade. Yeah. And uh, he's going to drink it all. And we can tell that he has made a bunch of glasses like all over his house. And they're full of lemonade and they have a an umbrella in each of them. Right, he's made all these drinks so that yes. he can quench his extreme thirst, and he even he says that he's exhausted, 
and he sure can't wait to drink them all. April Fools, just April Fools himself. I know, and it's such a great <laughs> delivery of April Fools, and then he holds up a little tiny mirror to me, to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so dumb, and uh, and this that, makes him laugh so much that he can't stop laughing. As yeah, but he, also I don't know if we really mentioned how large the pitcher was. It was pretty much bigger than the fridge after he pulled it out. Yeah, it was it was enormous. Yeah. Um, the same t- size pitcher I'm going to need when I take on Jackson Stone this Sunday at the Hot Rock for the Proving Ground title. But hopefully not full of lem- lemonade because he'll drink it. <laughs> That's his thing. That's the thing. I'm going to distract him. It's all oh. part of my game plan. Um, but SpongeBob can't stop laughing even as he goes past Squidward's house and Squidward's like, what, what the heck is he so happy about? And we see he's got his music stand with some music on it. And the only other thing to note in his room is a giant, like one of those calendars where you peel off the paper for the day, super huge waste of resources. Right. Um, but it says April 1st is today. Mm-hmm. So he's already pulled it off for the day, and today is April Fool's Day, and Squidward was unaware until now. Yeah, even though he already peeled off the paper for that day, obviously. He didn't even exactly. make, make note of what day it was. But this is um, SpongeBob's favorite holiday, and uh, this prompts Squidward to immediately call in to work at the Krusty Krab. So he dials on his shell phone to Mr. Krabs. And so he's got his hot water bottle on his head that we've seen before in Sandy's Rocket. Yep. And he has it on his head and he's telling Mr. Krabs that he can't come in. And he says he caught t- something terrible. And Mr. Krabs is like, you know, what'd you catch? Squidward says, I caught sight of the calendar, which <laughs> is really funny, I think. Actually. Sight of the calendar. It's I know he delivers it in a way like it's a real sickness, but it's like literally he's just telling him exactly what happened. Like, yeah. I saw what day it was and I don't want to work today. Yeah. <laughs> um, and while he's talking, there's a lovely painting that I assume he did of himself. Of course. As a, a self-portrait. Captain, right? With a little captain hat and a pipe. The man has a pipe and a beard. Yeah. <laughs> A little white beard. It's cute. Um, and there's another portrait behind him, too, but you, it's kind of obscured by Squidward's head, I think. So, really, yeah. the, more, the one that you can see is Squidward as the sea captain. Yeah, so then we, then we get a shot of Mr. Krabs in the Krusty Krab, and, you know, it, like, switches to him, and he's like, oh, hold on, and you can see him lean off screen, and then it goes back to Squidward, and you can hear him say, Uh, Squidward, someone's here for you. Uh, He says he's from the Barnacle Bay Art Museum, and they want to honor you as Artist of the Month. So Squidward takes off immediately. He takes off so fast that his shell phone goes spinning in midair. Yeah, and they like then it cuts into Mr. Krabs' office where Krabs and SpongeBob are sitting there giggling by the phone. Like they just hung up and Squidward's about to walk in. Yeah, he was so fast. And Squidward walks in with a beret on a paintbrush in his mouth. He has a thin mustache uh, and what else? Oh, he's wearing a, I think a pink or purple ascot. Yep. Uh, I think it was purple. Maybe I can't remember. I didn't write it down. Um, and you're colorblind. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm <all> good. <laughs> and so, Squidward comes in and goes, I have arrived. Yeah. Like he, he really it's I love how even though he's just talking about the fact that it's April Fool's Day, he doesn't even think for a second that Mr. Krabs would be fooling him. Um, right. Because he just, he just immediately falls for it and he comes yeah. and SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs are laughing and he's like, what? What's so funny? Where's the art dealer? And then Mr. Krabs like, oh, you just missed him. Yeah. They're like barely able to even keep it in. Yeah. yeah. But, but he told us to tell you. Tell me what? Yeah. He's like, <clears throat> like first he can't say it, but then he's super serious. Yeah. And I, lo- I always loved this. This is great. Yeah, this is great. Gohan. Oh, shit. What are you doing? Go, go bananas. Go see mommy. So he puts his, SpongeBob puts his hand up to Squidward and goes, he told me to tell you April Fool's. And he like starts giggling after and Squidward straight faced. 
He's ready to quit. He's ready to give it all up, and he lays his hat on the table and walks His work off. hat, not his beret thing. Right, he has right, an right. actual... Um, Correct, his work hat. Yeah, yeah good, so he carried it with out. him. And um, he's like, uh, you know, mail my check to the P.O. box, and SpongeBob is trying to get him to stop, and um, he's like, it was just a joke, you know? No more jokes today, I promise. So Squidward is like, you do? And he says, sure. There are lots of other willing participants, right, Mr. Krabs? And Mr. Krabs sits down on a whoopee cushion on his chair in his <laughs> office at that and moment. And his eyes, like, bulge. Yeah, his eyes bulge real big. And uh, Squidward is happy with that as long as it's not him. So, or er, transition to the utensils area of the restaurant where the old lady fish with white hair and, uh, you know, thick glasses. Whose name is Cora, apparently. Apparently. Um, she, we have seen her. Yeah, we just saw her in. Um, we just brought it up in Neptune. Oh, did we see her before this? I don't. Not that I'm aware of. Oh right. Okay. I believe this is the first appearance of this old lady fish, but she may have appeared in the background before. I'm not sure. But she's asking where the forks are, and SpongeBob uh, is like, "Oh, right here." It's a spoon. She picks it up and looks at it, and it's like, well, this is a spoon. And I like the way his face is animated here. It, like, shrinks real fast, and then it, like, lunges towards the camera yeah. to to show his excitement. He's, like, withholding it, but then he lets it all out. Yeah. And then says, April Fool's. She goes, aw, and walks away with the with spoon. With the spoon, yeah. I always thought that was so funny, like... And it's pretty obvious. She's at this area. It says utensils. There's three cups with things sticking out of them. It's kind of the joke to begin with that she can't find it on her own. So it's yeah. like he has to show her. And then it's like, I don't know. It's it's a, it's a funny. I don't know. She can obviously see that it's a spoon and doesn't even think to pick something else up. Like Exactly. She's goofy. Yeah, but then Squidward walks up. And he looks at Spongebob, and he, like, stops laughing and runs away. He's like, you know, like, he doesn't want Squidward to quit. <laughs> right. Um, Spongebob is at the register, and a customer comes like, up. Like, why, also? Right. He's never he, supposed This to is the there. only time we've ever seen him there up to this point. Except for... No. I don't think so. <laughs> and he, he takes... He's going to take this fish's order, and the fish is, like... He orders uh, two large fries, a jumbo Krabby Patty, and S SpongeBob points at something behind him, you know, classic, like, hey, what's that? Um, and the dude turns around. SpongeBob turns around to reveal a smiley face drawn on his back, which wasn't there two seconds before, but yeah. it's there now. And the guy's like, oh, hey, uh, where, where'd the other guy go? Uh, yeah, he, like, first he's like, well, I didn't see anything. Oh. Hey, where's it? Like, first he, yeah. he's just talking, and he's yeah. like, oh, wait, you're not the same. Yeah, right. And uh, then SpongeBob turns around, and he's like, April Fools, I'm right here. And I love the guy's reaction to this. <laughs> he's like, ha, ha, hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> he he actually, like, cracks up pretty yeah. good. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Right, he does. It, he like, does it like, starts out, like, small, and then it actually, like, it's like, whoa, he really liked that joke. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Squidward is uh, Squidward notices uh, because they're all laughing about it, and yeah. it's like, "What are you doing behind the counter?" And SpongeBob like runs away like a little kid, yeah, or but, like, yeah, like he was just caught. Like to me, it reminded me of like my cat when you you, you find your cat, or I'm yeah. sure your dogs probably what are you some. Doing? What are you? And they're like, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Squidward came, he poked his head through the order window too. It's like, what are you doing, Squidward? Although yeah, we will find out. You did, yeah, you did doing. bring that up when we were watching it. You were like, what is he doing in the kitchen? And yeah. it is a good question, actually, but we, we'll see. Yeah, because it does kind of show up. But then the next thing it goes to, uh, SpongeBob is wiping the floor, and the chocolate fish, Tom, comes up with a glass of soda, and he says, excuse me, can I get a couple of ice cubes, please? And um, I'm assuming this is orange soda. I don't know. It's orange in color. That's cool that they have orange soda down there. You know who loves orange soda? I do. I do. I do. Cal loves orange soda. <laughs> orange Fago was always my go-to as a kid. 
I yeah. See, I had Fago sometimes, but not too too often. It was if I was cheap. doing uh, orange soda, it was most likely Fanta. I'm gonna say probably Sunkist Sun growing was up. Big. Yeah, um, and I like Sunkist. It's it's good. Uh, Hopefully, the thunder picks up on the mic. <laughs> there's it's uh, a spoo- if this was the Halloween. God thing. is going bowling in heaven right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you know he's blowing his nose. That's the lightning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. Uh, he's looking for some ice cubes. SpongeBob obliges. Uh, he says a couple of ice cubes coming up. And fills the cup with ice, and we can see that there's only one in there. Yeah. But he gives it to him. Tom uh, downs the drink. Right. Well, first he starts drinking it, and then he hears like laughing. Oh right, right. And he like pokes his head forward. And it's like a meme because of just how funny it is. Because SpongeBob, like it's a MFW type situation, like a my face when. Right, his SpongeBob is uh, suppressing his laughter, so yeah. he just has this like blank expression, just looking forward as best yeah. he can, just trying to suppress the laughter of this hilarious joke that he is pulling right now. And then it cuts to. Tom drinking again, and then you hear him laughing, and he looks, and he pauses again all blank, and then he downs the rest of the drink, and SpongeBob at that point cannot stop laughing. He's like, ah, ha, 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 April Fools, and And then he grabs SpongeBob by the skin and, like, holds it as if he were holding someone's shirt, and he's like, what did you do to my drink? Yeah. This is the... Second time he's had an argument with a fish that looks like this, even if it was a different color, about a drink. About a drink, yeah, that's funny. Um, well, no, that it is officially considered Tom in that first episode, even though he's red. He was just young. Yeah, He right. was going through a red phase. Right, right. He was going through a red, hairy-bellied phase. Um, We've and, all been there. Yeah, and um, anyway, Tom, and this is funny, I guess, this is all fuel to the fire for his rage that we will become very familiar with later on in the series. Uh, you know, this, this is like a precursor to like, this dude gets angry sometimes. (laughs) Like, you know, uh, (laughs) but SpongeBob's like, I, he, I, he, he, he's like, you what? You asked for a couple of ice cubes. I only put in one. (laughs) And like, hilariously you almost expect tom you would almost expect tom to like freak out and be like i'm gonna kill you i mean but why it was just an ice cube thing i know but then i i don't know just because he's so mad i don't know he's like well i guess that is pretty funny even though (laughs) honestly it's not funny come on but it is a light-hearted april fool fair enough it's it's uh yeah it's light-hearted harmless no harm no foul exactly um he's laughing so hard that his tongue pops out of his mouth and is like it has eyes and a mouth well, and it also starts uh, laughing. Yes, but right before that he laughs and he cries and there's a puddle and then he does this like weird pelvic thrust up into the air. Um SpongeBob does. And then his tongue pops off and they laugh together. And uh I love SpongeBob. I love this joke. Um and I love the animation on this joke. He says, your shoes are untied to his tongue. His yeah. tongue looks down and SpongeBob like swoops underneath so he can like see the, the tongue from the tongue looking down. Yeah. And it's like, April Fools, you're not wearing shoes. And they laugh together. Yeah, and he like hugs him and the tongue's just like smiling. The the tongue has the most adorable little face. <laughs> like it's like this weird, like just like super happy. Yeah. There's no t- toothless grin. Like, uh, But SpongeBob's laugh doesn't change now that he has no tongue but a sentient tongue at that. And yeah. then they go to the microphone where they do orders and they start laughing through there. And this whole time it starts cutting, it's cutting to Squidward, like being like first he's cleaning a glass and then he like starts cleaning it faster. Like, Grr. and then like after they start doing in the microphone, he has pieces of like paper like tissue paper shoved like, in his sh- yeah in the sides, sides of, of his, his head. head yeah <laughs> um but what a jerk 
to like just laugh on the microphone to the whole restaurant like that's so dumb that's a bit overkill i won't lie this is probably i think this is the first time we've ever seen the microphone in the crusty crab maybe not i'm not sure but i think so i can't recall it before this Anyway, um, right, they're laughing right into the thing, and obviously it's annoying as shit, because SpongeBob's laugh is, like, purposely annoying. Yeah, and then all uh, we can hear is, like, April Fool's, and then, like, right, everything's, like, la- shaking from the laughter. Laughing again, and then Squidward has, uh, he's fed up with it, and he says, enough with this, you know? Yeah, he, dro- he drops and breaks the plate that he was cleaning. Yeah, and he's this. going to show SpongeBob what a real prank is all about. Uh, oh man. And I, I was telling you, uh, that for some reason, this episode has stuck out to me as while I was watching it, I was able to remember everything that happened. And I didn't really have that so much for most of these episodes we've watched so far. Personally, this this one, one I for sure, I was like, I remember this part and I was like, yeah, when you, uh, before the donkey part that's coming off, all of that, I was like. I, I knew exactly what was going to happen right before it happened, yeah. and it and felt good. Like it was a good like feeling of like I love this one. This is a good one. And this one at it. first, like I saw the because what we see next is Squidward it has like a piece of rope with a it's like made into a circle, and he uh, puts mustard on the ground. There's like a thing of mustard, and when I first saw it, I was like mustard who's he trying to catch and then i was like oh i remember what happens and i instantly got sad for spongebob yeah i was like the, before anything I, even i happened. knew it no i knew it as soon as he said he's gonna show him what a real prank is about i'm like oh yeah he beats the shit out of him <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then squidward walks over to spongebob and he just points at the mess and he's like Oh boy, something for me to clean up. And he's already cleaning a glass or a plate or something a, at that time. Such a good boy. Yeah, so now he's going to do his job. And he's in the middle of the rope, cleaning up mustard off the ground. Right. And uh, he actually gets it all cleaned up uh, pretty much immediately. And it's sparkling clean. And he's like standing over it all. All proud happy, of it. Yeah, yeah, all proud while Squidward uh, runs over to the rope that is tied to like a cleat on the wall. And he has safety scissors with him because, of course, like they're like rounded like safety scissors. I think it's because, you know, that's the only scissors kids should know for a while. I don't know. Or maybe sure. they just look like that because it was stylized, but that's what I thought about. I didn't think anything of it, but that's fine, Zach. It sounds good to me. Um, yeah. And we see that the rope uh, goes over the rafter and has an anchor tied to it so that yeah. when it goes down, it'll uh, it'll pick up whatever is uh, in the middle of the rope that SpongeBob is in the middle of. Yeah, so it instantly snags his feet and then runs him through this horrific Rube Goldberg type torture device yeah. that Squidward has created. It's so sad. Uh, first it sends SpongeBob into a, uh, and he says April fools first, right? Cuts April it. fools cuts it. SpongeBob is sent flying into the, the side of the restaurant into a pile of bags of flour, like right into the window too. Yeah. Right. And he's like, stuck up against the window with all this flour on him now. And then when he flies off, you know, his like outline is there on the window. Yeah. And then he, he's like wrapping around a, one of the horizontal pillars in the like top of the ceiling area. He's like a rafter. He's like unraveling around it, spinning around it real fast. Like, yeah. And then he, he hits this, big wall like above where the door would be and at this like squidward's laughing the whole time but then at this point he starts cracking up and his eyes like bulge out of his head it reminds me i know you don't have like the most fond memory or like remembrance of this show but the episode of courage the cowardly dog where uh eustace uses ointment on his head to make him grow hair but it makes him pissed off at everything. And he like his face gets all red and his eyes get veiny and pop out of his head. 
It kind of looks like that. I don't remember that. Just the but mesh of the bald head and the eyes popping I love, out. I love. I do love this face of Squidward. Um, this episode in general, that's a theme. Like faces, the tongue's face, this face, and there's a few more faces that Squidward will make that are really good in this episode. Um, but yeah, this one is probably one of my favorites, I think, because yeah, he like pauses for a second to register SpongeBob smacking into the wood. And then you almost think like, he's going to be like, oh shit, that was scary. Right. Cause or, the customers, I, you can hear them going, the, oh yeah. The customers oh. are not impressed. And you almost think Squidward's going to be like, oh man, I just heard him. But instead he bursts out even hard, like hard yeah. as hell in laughter to the point where his eyeballs and there's veins in his head popping out. It's it's bonkers. I love that uh, face, though, that he makes. Yeah. So then uh, SpongeBob is screaming, too, and he is sent under a big old butt. Yeah. And it like it, he has like a trail of fire when he runs through it. He's like getting butt rug burn. And uh, it's funny, too. Wouldn't bubble bass? I mean, uh, it can be this this fish that whose butt he goes into looks exactly like bubble bass besides the clothes are different and the actual color of his skin are yeah, different. You know, I think that bubble bass like is one of the ones that changes because I don't remember him being in many episodes dressed like he was in the first one. I really remember him. And then when they did the plankton F U N and he sat on him. Right. But other than that, I remember seeing ones of him, but in different clothes or different variations. Well, according to the SpongeBob Wikipedia, which we know is not always accurate, uh, but according to that, this is Bubble Bass's final appearance until 11 years later. Oh, dang. So, I don't know. You're probably making that up. No, I mean, I'm saying like in this one, and, and there was yeah. another one that he, there was a fat, fish right there was a different fish that you thought looked like bubble bass but it wasn't bubble bass it was oh. a different fish that had glasses there's another f- background fish that has glasses it's but it's like a flounder type it looks like flounder from it has like a big body but it wears pants i think and it has glasses i think that's what you're thinking of sure i don't know but so anyway the, run, i mean yeah, the, wi- the wiki butt. could be wrong so so Squidward, in making this, had to have like climbed up to the ceiling, like wrapped that times. around. Yeah, went under Bubble Bass's butt, um, and all of this just happened. One Bubble perfectly. Bass like feel that rope, fucking. Right. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, he didn't feel s- sitting on plankton, and when he did, he just mushed him into his butt more. Yeah, he liked it. Yeah. So then, let's see. What does he do after that? Goes through the butt. Yeah, I wrote down anchor. Yeah, there's like a explosion and you can see anchors for a second. Oh, right. Yeah, that's why. Because it's like a, it's funny. It's, it's just a quick effect of like a boom. Like a cartoon. You know? Yeah, yeah. Bam. Yeah. But instead of, there's like pictures of anchors. Yeah. It's cool. And then Squidward is like, he's like a cheerleader. He's like running and jumping and he's woohoo. And yeah, he's then, so happy about what's happening. And then it looks like SpongeBob's actually falling, and the crowd is still horrified. Well, yeah, he smashes in the ceiling, SpongeBob does. Oh, right, the ceiling. And, and then and then I was telling you, this is a random thing that's memorable to me, just the way he peels off, and he goes, oh. Oh, it's I don't a, know if we mentioned when he was peeled off the wall that there was an imprint left of An him indentation, as well. right. He, Into so, the wood. he went so hard, and he's a sponge, dude. He's yeah. soft. definitely got some issues to work out so yeah now spongebob's falling from the ceiling and squidward's like oh i'll catch you (laughs) and he's like still laughing and it's Um, great because squidward is running towards him and we get that flintstone style 
thing of he's running and the background is repeated yeah, over it's and like over. Yeah, a huge restaurant. Yeah, the room is like enormous and yeah. like there's hundreds of people eating there. Uh, for, yeah, I mean, it's only a split second, but it is it goes on long enough that it's like, whoa, they repeated that background like eight times. <laughs> like, yeah. um, and then he goes to uh, catch him, but at the last second, we see there's a trash can next to Squidward. He lets SpongeBob land right in the slimy, gross yeah, trash can. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It looks like ground meat or something almost. Like It's, it's basically just slime. It's like goopy, but it's like brown, right? It's green, so it's like slime. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like brown. I mean, it's dark green, to your credit. Uh, he goes, oops, and then he picks up the can and wiggles SpongeBob out. Like, he literally has to wiggle him out. And now he's in the shape of a cylinder instead of a square. And so he goes, yeah. April fools, you little sausage. <laughs> yeah. And his like nose is pressed up and his cheeks are like pressed up. And he, he looks, looks like he's in pain. He looks sad. pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. And then at this point, he just starts crying like so bad. And he runs out of the store or yeah. the restaurant. Still in cylindrical form. Yeah, and uh, it's very sad. And then, yeah, it's it is. Uh, there's a lot of like, there's a few moments of people crying in this episode, and you just feel bad for them. Yeah. Um, which nobody I, ever shows the bad side of pranking. Right, and then you know Squidward realizes his mistake, and he's like, you know, hey SpongeBob, I was just kidding. Come on. And he's and like, he you, looks at the rest. You all, yeah, right. People. You all know I was just kidding, right? And the crowd is not on Squidward's side and uh, they're like, Oh man, poor kid. And there's like this female fish who has a very manly voice and is like, that guy definitely has issues to work out. And they all look at Squidward um, and they all leave. And Tom is like April fools jerk. And they all leave disgusted. And Squidward, he starts to realize like, Oh boy, I oh. must have messed up. You oh know, boy. you can see him start to uh, to realize that he is indeed in the wrong. And right. he, well, first he goes, "Wait, don't go!" And then you hear just a voice go, "Hey, you stink!" Which is recycled, a recycled line from the episode Pickles, when. They hip go, hip. Yeah. Boo, you stink. Yep. Yeah. And um Squidward is just like, you know, it's just a joke. And he looks around at the mess he's made and he's not happy yeah, with what he sees. He sees the outline of SpongeBob in the flower. He's like, ooh, he sees yeah. the imprint in the ceiling. Ow. He sees uh Bubble Bass who has like a big like chunk just missing missing from his ass yeah yeah his ginormous it's ass. like ah why is it whenever i'm having fun it's wrong i didn't mean to make him cry it's like well i guess that i should tell spongebob i'm sorry uh, oh my gosh Ugh. dude his face right here this is okay this is yeah. definitely my favorite face in the episode but like i was he, saying there's awesome yeah. facials in this. His one. like lower part of his face is like extended and his mouth is down and his like tongue sticking out and his eyes are I'm just gonna go ahead crazy. and say this is the special image for the episode, you know? It'll show up as the image on Spotify, I yeah. believe. Uh yeah, I think so. I think that's fair. Yeah. Unless we think of something else. I like this. Like it's my favorite. I think yeah, it looks it's so good. Um and Anyway, I mean, the the joke being that it's like it's imp like something is physically restraining him from saying he's sorry about what he did. Um, yeah. And then he can he tries to say, I better apologize. <laughs> yeah. Can't say apologize either. His like throat gets uh, like it gets caught in his throat and his head like shoots out. To he the has side. so much pride. He can't even like say sorry when he's but wrong. it's funny though because he's able to admit that it's going to be tougher than he thought like yeah he's aware that he should be able to say he's sorry but he physically can't there's like something that his pride will physically not allow him to say it um and we bubble transition over to squidward outside of spongebob's pineapple yeah and he's knocking on the door 
and he starts to try to get SpongeBob to come out. Like, SpongeBob, come on, I got something to tell you. Uh, and then he looks over because there's no answer at the door. Well, he gets hit by some dirt that's flung his way. And he's right. like, whoa, what? Um, and he notices a hat uh, behind some rocks. And it's the Krusty Krab uniform hat. Right. So he, he obviously assumes that it's SpongeBob. And he goes over and starts to say, I, you know, he I was thinking about this his, day. Yeah. yeah, he's trying to like, you know, apologize you here. Know, I may, well, yeah, but he won't say it. He's like, uh, I just think that I may owe you some sort of, uh, this isn't something I normally do. So listen carefully. I'm about to tell you that I am, and then he like peers over the rock, and it, it he sees Patrick digging with his hands. Right, he hasn't actually looked at yeah. him because he's like so nervous about it that he's like looking away. You know how you don't look someone in the eye or whatever yeah. when you're nervous. He's like Patrick, what are you doing here? Yeah, it's Patrick huh. digging. <laughs> yeah, he's just digging a hole. Patrick, what are you doing here? Digging. Why are you wearing that hat? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Which is just great. It's like so so random. Whoever was in the writer's room that day must have been like... This is how he'll talk to Patrick. Let's just have Patrick be there. And who the fuck cares why? He's yeah. just digging a hole for who the fuck knows, you know? Yeah, maybe it was part of SpongeBob's April Fool's. I don't know. It was just, it was yeah. just such a random thing. But... So he's like, where's SpongeBob? He, Patrick tells him that he's in, in his house and he's impressed. And he's we impressed. both, we both didn't get this joke as kids. Uh, he's talking about, he means depressed. Oh, because he's sad. Gotcha. You didn't get that? No. Damn. It's a dumb Patrick joke. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, with what? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, but it must have been pretty good to make him cry like that. It's also funny that he calls it pretty good. Yeah. It's like it would have to be pretty bad, you know, but it's like pretty good, meaning bad. It's right. It, it's weird. It makes sense, but it doesn't. The but English also, language is so stupid sometimes. It could also be like, oh, the reaction I got from him was that he was impressed and he cried because he was so impressed. You know, that was the way I saw it. Um, I, yeah, I don't, that would make I don't, sense I don't think that's what they're going for, but I, I feel you. At least it makes you made sense of it in your yeah. own way. And the reason I said it like out the way that Patrick did is because it plays again later. Um, and it, it's like because it plays twice in the episode, I specifically remember the the delivery of the line and the way that it is as mm-hmm. a memorable part of the show in general. Sure. Yeah. So then he like goes to back to SpongeBob's house and he's like, SpongeBob, come on, let me in. And at this point, SpongeBob, uh, he's like trying to turn the, the big wheel that opens the door first. And then he stops SpongeBob. You can see his arm. He pulls up from the bottom of the door, almost like it's a curtain, right? Like you can even see a fold in the door and he like reaches out lifts his arm right. up it's like stretching really far right grabs that wheel and pulls it underneath and back in so now there's no way for him to get in yeah it's a good cartoony gag squidward sees there's no way in and he goes and grabs his clarinet and he's like come on spongebob but you better let me in i don't want to have to use this and he starts playing his clarinet it's like meh, 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 meh. Yeah, it's like horrible. Very quickly, SpongeBob opens the door and is like, "What do you want?" Yeah, you can just kind of see like half of him. He yeah. looks like he's been sitting in darkness. He's, he's kinda, like, "What are you?" Yeah, want? he's definitely sad. And he says, "I just wanted to say I'm sorry." And and he sticks out his tongue, and I don't even know. I don't remember what his face looks like, but I wrote this face. Holy shit! So it must have <laughs> been a good one. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the one where his like cheeks are both sticking out, oh, and then there's little bumps on the, yeah, there's little bumps on the sides of his cheeks too, and his tongue sticking yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like he's like, yeah, he's, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a funny look. Uh, yeah. And SpongeBob is like, what? It's like I'm trying to say, and he turns into a donkey. 
Like yeah. his face shifts and it, it It's a weird sea donkey with hair. Yeah, I always thought he looked kind of like Snake from Powerpuff Girls, but he does the he ah he yeah. like in what Courage the Cowardly Dog is known for shape shifting to use his words right. like instead of words. Right. If Courage did this, what he would be saying is I'm an ass. And that yeah. is what what Squidward right. is, but he can't physically say it. And as a kid, we we don't know. Right. You know, it's I want to mention real quick. I don't know what cartoon it was, but it was I believe two mice. It was similar to Tom and Jerry, but it was two mice and they actually spoke to each other. It was an old cartoon, and I remember that Pinky in the Brain. No, it wasn't. It was. I mean, this is like thirty, like old cartoon. Like Fifeful goes west. No, no, no. Uh, like you don't know what it is. Obviously, if you haven't seen it, I can't. Fifeful live. I can't reloaded. remember what happens, but they're trying to. They're trying to outsmart a cat, I believe. And one of the one of their plans doesn't go to, you know, how they expect. There's like this. There's like the serious mouse and the smart ass mouse, and the smart ass mouse calls the serious mouse a jackass when his plan doesn't work, and he actually turns into a donkey. But he actually <laughs> says it. He's like jackass, jackass. I remember as a kid being like, "They're swearing. It's a cartoon. Like what the fuck? Right? Like it was crazy." Uh, as a cart or as a as a kid, uh, finding out which versions of swear words are wrong was always weird because it's like oh i'm listening to a song that i've heard the bad version of and it's or like watching something on tv and it's like he said ass bleep so you 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 keep the bad part of asshole is whole you know people would always do that right it was weird it's that is a strange thing i can't quite understand you would think it would be the other way around bleep out the ass and then it just says whole and there's a lot of things that people think is like not allowed on tv but then then uh you know south park comes out with an episode where they say shit like a hundred times and then they come out with an episode where randy says the n-word and they say it a bunch of times and it's just kind of like I didn't realize you could get away with this thing. <laughs> well, Nobody I know does it Dave it's Chappelle so did it too with yeah. the N word. Yeah. So then Squidward says, I'm just trying to say, um, and then his head explodes. And now there's like SpongeBob and his door and everything is all covered in char. And he's like, there's got to be an easier way to do this. Even though his head is like exploded, he's still able to talk. Um, yeah, this is a very Looney Tunes type gag. I, I yeah. thought. Yeah, like Daffy gets like, his head blown like his off. head is literally like yeah, explo- like it it exploded and it's literally like in like pieces kind of now. to shreds. You yeah, say. shreds right. Uh, and right, to shreds, but he's still you say. but he's still somehow able to talk. Um, it's funny you don't get Futurama references even I though don't. you get. Simpsons ones. I would get every Simpsons reference, but I will never get a Futurama reference, unfortunately. But we could do this show for Futurama, theoretically, and it would be a good reason for me to watch every episode. And I love every episode. So, there you go. Uh, Patreon listeners, you know, when the time comes, why don't you vote for uh, Futurama for our next uh, cartoon we're going to review? It'll be the year 3000 by the time we actually get a Patreon person. So the next thing we see is Squidward. He's writing a note and then he puts it in a bottle and he takes a cork and shoves the cork in there all the way. Yeah. As far as he can. (laughs) Yeah. And then he bends over, puts it on the ground and gently rolls it to SpongeBob. And SpongeBob's like, you know, just without saying it, he's like, Oh, a bottle. And he picks it up. Yeah. And he's just holding it with a dumb look on his face. And Squidward's like, well, aren't you going to open it? He's like, I can't. I don't have a bottle opener. Squidward's so dumb. And also, obviously, he probably just wrote, I'm sorry, inside the note. Yeah. Uh, Right. That's all it has to say, right? And instead of just showing it to him, he's making this intricate thing. Because it's that hard for him. His pride is too much. Uh, So his next plan is to give... uh, Yeah. His next plan is to give SpongeBob a can, point at it, point at the can attached to a string in his hand, and give a thumbs up. Yeah. Then get into his car, 
his canoe car that we've never seen before. Yeah. And I don't even know if we ever see it again. It's like a big canoe. Is it green? Yeah, a green canoe. And it has little white wheels, like a box car. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's obviously got a motor or whatever. It moves, you know, like a regular car. He goes... He goes, SpongeBob, I'm, and he like whispers into the can, and then he <laughs> puts, <laughs> yeah, like that's what you hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. He puts his can, or he puts the can up to his ear, and you just hear the. <laughs> Squidward pulls out some binoculars to see what's happening. He sees SpongeBob with the can up to his ear, and then we see just a few feet away on a rock is Patrick. He's flossing his big teeth with the uh, the line. Looking like Cookie Monster flossing his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like with a with a light thin uh, a light thin chain. Just a thin chain. It's not light. The beer's light. The chain's thin, razor thin, <laughs> like an insect stripper pole. <laughs> Squidward throws his binoculars down. And he's pissed that this isn't working. And then he just walks right up to SpongeBob and goes, SpongeBob, all I'm trying to say is that I am. And he like, as he's waving his tentacles around, these bubbles form. And he takes a big one and he puts his head in and he goes, and I am. Sorry. There you go. But I couldn't. I don't hear- care. I said it. Yeah, you know, kind of like it's inside echo- of a bubble. It like echoes and yeah, SpongeBob can't hear it. it he it, pops the bubble immediately. After. It's only hearable within the bubble. Yeah, Squidward is like, "There you go," and he's like, "But I couldn't." And he's like, "I don't care. I said it." Mike. Yeah, he slams the door in his face yeah. as he's saying this. Yeah, right, Squidward. What a jerk right here. And he starts to walk away, and we get this Home Alone reference that Zach is not keen to, but for the listeners at home. Uh, Pat Patrick pops up like in an imaginary uh, way in front of Squidward and says, must have been pretty good to make him cry like that. And then we see a weird version of Tom pop up from before. It, it's Tom's line from before. And yeah. he says, April Fool's jerk. The line in Home Alone is, look what you did, you little jerk, which Obviously, this is a reference to that because it pops up in the same exact way in Home Alone and uses the word jerk in the same exact way. Yeah, and then he he's like walking more, and then it, it's a big picture of Squidward's mom. It just looks like Squidward with white hair and glasses, essentially, and it goes, "You stink." Yeah, in and, in like a man's voice. Too. Yeah, and Squidward goes, "Mother." Yeah. And he runs back to SpongeBob's house and he's like, all right, all right. All right, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I admit it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. In fact, SpongeBob, I like you. I like living next door. I like hearing your foghorn alarm in the morning and your high pitched giggling at night. I also like Gary, Patrick, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, and all the other people I'm forced to be in contact with. And, 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 and Squidward. Is all that true? Yes, yes, SpongeBob. Yes, it's all true. Even the part about the lima beans and the car chase? The what? The, yes, yes, whatever. But you have to promise not to tell anybody. I promise. Really? April Fools! You're right, April Fools! I just fooled you all! Ha 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 ha! What would we do without Squidward? It's kind of a backhanded compliment at the end there, but yeah, still. <laughs> he goes, even the part about the lima beans and the car chase, and he's like, what, what, yes, what, whatever. Yeah, but uh, I'm glad that Squidward catches on. He's like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's a memorable line too, the lima beans and the car chase. And he's like, yeah, uh, just promise not to tell anybody. And SpongeBob says, I promise. Really? Yeah, of course. We get another really, yeah. and then it's no. That's kind of yeah, a common thing. That is a joke, a reoccurring thing in SpongeBob. Uh, really? SpongeBob opens the door all the way, revealing everyone in Bikini Bottom, including Mr. Krabs, Sandy, Patrick, and the rest of the gang Yeah, in the, in the town. And 
They all say April Fools, and we get another great face from Squidward as yeah. he's got that kind of blank face and his eye just kind of twitches. Ha! April Fools, you're right. April Fools, I just fooled you all. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. Run, running back to his house the whole time. He freaks out and the, and just goes crazy, basically. And he runs back into his house and SpongeBob says, what would we do without Squidward? And in this shot, too, it's like you can see all the people in the back and SpongeBob has his arm over Mr. Krabs' shoulder. Yeah. But it's like Patrick is also in between it. It's kind of weird. But he's like... You know, he's just buddy-buddy with Mr. Krabs. What would we do without Squidward? Squidward yeah. is the strange glue that holds the people together. It wouldn't be the same place without Squidward. Like, you have to have Squidward in Bikini Bottom for the balance of all things. Just like when you show your dick to someone, you have to see their dick. The Boy Scout rule of Ds. Exactly. Uh, that episode, really good. Best holiday one so far. Um, one of my favorites that we've covered so far as well, big lessons learned here from all, like from a few of the characters. Um, yeah. What are our morals here? One out of one, April one out of one, man. So next we have Neptune's spatula. Neptune's spatula, 11 minutes and 16 seconds, a little bit longer than average. Storyboard director was Chuck Klein, a storyboard artist, Jay Lender, written by them too, along with David B. Fain. He added a middle initial. What's going on, David? <laughs> uh, animation director, Fred Miller. And creative director was Derek Drymon. And a uh, fun little footnote. Fred Miller, this is his last episode as animation director. Interesting. I noticed that the animation on this, I thought, looked a little different than normal. Some of the, like, the faces and body shapes, but he was the one who did the last episode, too, right? Correct, yes. Uh, so, I mean... And, and that last episode, I was commenting on how great some of the animation was, especially the facials uh, yeah. were incredible in the last episode. So, uh, sad to see him go, but, uh, you know... I'm excited for season two, which we are getting super close to, but... So uh, it opens up... Oh, sorry, real quick. Wait, we didn't even say. Creative director. You said it was Derek Drummond. I didn't say that, did I? Yeah. I think you just said creative director Derek Drummond. I said it really fast. Yeah. It's funny. You want me to go back and play it? Special guest, though. We have a special guest on this one. As the voice of King Neptune, John O'Hurley. Uh, who is John O'Hurley? Would I know him from anything else? Not that I, I didn't look him up. I was going to look him up, too. Let's look up John O'Hurley. He was Jay Peterman on Seinfeld, which I don't know. This guy? Oh, he was the host of Family Feud, it says. Is yeah, that, it's Is that guy. the same guy? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that sounds... Like that voice seems like that would be correct. Oh, he announced Boomerang for 14 years. Yeah, so this he guy. He was the guy who was like, no, on Boomerang. Right. Oh, he was on Drake and Josh, too. Yep, as a doctor in one episode. Dr. Carlson. No, is that what it says? Yeah. Damn it. No, it's Dr. There's a joke. I know the joke. Isn't it Dr. Like, oh, Dr. Pussbaum. Right. Dr. Pussbaum. I think that's what that's what Josh says his name is or whatever, or Drake says. Because it's Dr. Nussbaum. Yeah. Which is a real. So maybe it's a different episode. So, yeah, this is this is that guy. He uh, he did. Family Feud, right? That's what you said? Yeah, it says he was the host of Family Feud for like six years or something. Yeah, or he four was... four years. He was in an episode of Hey Arnold as Councilman Gladhand. Was in early episodes of Family Guy. This guy's voice was everywhere. He was on Drake and Josh. Oh, he was, in, he was in the Flintstones and WWE Stone Age Smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
So yeah, pretty uh, pretty good guy, pretty good voice. Interesting. So it opens up to the title card, and it's very Greek art. Like it's it looks like Greek art. There's yeah waves painted in. There's these leaves that look like dicks, and then there's these squigglies. I know. I noticed that too. I was like, those look like wieners, dude. It's weird. We wiener is cold. Yeah, and me and um, my cousin touched wieners. <laughs> We open up to the Fry Cook Museum, an establishing shot of the outside, and it's like a uh, boiler, we, yep. we said. It even it, has like a small knob on the top that looks like, a, you know, you'd have on a spigot. Um, and then the sign is on a giant spatula, and then in the background we can see just half of a giant frying pan in the ground stuck in the sand yeah yeah and uh inside we see a strange we we were both like what the heck is this thing yeah a strange fish on a platter but it's on top of like a hat and there's like legs underneath it yeah and it has an apple in its mouth but the fish is like a fish fish not like a anthropomorphic fish like we're used to in the spongebob universe that's a little bit strange. I wonder if it's like, oh, like they're so far in, so far advanced. They're like, oh, this is what we used to be like. Could be potentially. And I mean, just I guess that's what's going. Uh, they are in the museum after all. We see like a weird. I, I don't know. Is it a squid or an octopus? It yeah. has like a weird beak, but it kind of looks like the Wiggler from the Mario Brothers. Yeah, but it has six arms, and each of them have oven mitts on them, and all right. these things. SpongeBob and Patrick are just ooh ah, and ooh, I noticed that like Patrick's is always more exaggerated than SpongeBob's. Like yeah, yeah. In the background of the shot too, we see a picture on the wall, and it says it shows a picture of a fork. The plus sign, picture of spoon equals, and then it's a spork. Yeah. Fork plus spoon equals spork. Can't argue with that. Good stuff. And in the next shot, we see the tough guy of grease in the background, which... Grease as in the stuff you cook stuff in, not the place. Right. But I guess that's the joke, is that he's like a tough guy from Greece kind yeah, of there's thing. like it, two it's of like, them. Anyway, I mean, I think it's a picture of the same guy, just twice, but oh, okay. I'm not sure. And then anyway, they're looking at a they're burger. They're looking at a fancy burger with a olive stuck in it. Uh, in a toothpick. In a toothpick, like a martini with like a garnish. And, uh, ooh, ah. And we see them looking at a fork. It's like a, it's, it looks like it might be like a gold fork, but still. It's, it's just in a, glass. And there's like a piece of paper in there that says fork. That's all it is, right? Yeah. And they're like, ooh, ah, they're getting more and more excited about each thing. Even and I wanted getting... to mention, too, before we get too far, Patrick is wearing a purple t shirt and a green baseball cap. And he has a camera around his neck, which has like a, uh, a, a shell. seashell for the flash. Yeah. They're, they're looking around, and finally they see. The ultimate cooking utensil. The golden spatula. And then uh, SpongeBob is telling Patrick about the golden spatula. And you can see Larry walking up to the spatula. And he's like... Or Patrick is telling SpongeBob about it. He's reading it. It says, hey, look what it says here. Many have tried to pull the spatula from this ancient Greece, but all have failed. So it's kind of like... uh, uh, King Arthur, yes, Excalibur, yep, in Sword in the Stone. Only the, he who is worthy can pull it. And right. Larry, one of the strongest men in all of Bikini Bottom, that's why he's here by far. He uh, is pulling it out. He's trying to pull it out, pull it out, and he just goes flying and right. He like, can't do it. Yeah, he just lets go and flings backward. Right, the force is too great. So SpongeBob is like, ooh, like. Only a fry cook worthy of King Neptune himself can wield the golden spatula. SpongeBob is like, take a picture of me and the spatula. Yeah, so he's not even like, I want to see if I can pull it out. He's like, 
Hey, Patrick, just give, get a picture of me holding this thing. Yeah, he just wants a pic because he's a fan. He's a fry cook uh, mark, if you will. And he's like, okay. And Patrick is getting ready to take the picture. So um, it's the old lady from the last episode. And she's like, excuse me, do you know where the menu section is? Which is funny because like... There's oh, just a whole section of famous menus. Right, yeah. right. Beautiful, like incredible. Like this is this is what a menu is. This is the first menu, you know? Yeah, the first menu ever created. Um, and Patrick's like, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. And he like is drooling. He's drooling. He can't think. He doesn't know where it is. Patrick is an idiot. And SpongeBob is like, that's easy. It's over that way. Yeah. And, and he, he just like pulls, pulls it out. The, the spatula from the grease without any issue at all with ease and points with the spatula unknowing he doesn't even do it on purpose it's completely yeah. unknowing um, and he's so like he's worthy and then the clouds start to spiral over his head and he's like uh oh and <laughs> she and this old lady is like holy smokes yeah <laughs> like it sounds like she's been smoking cigarettes for years yeah right all of a sudden which is totally different from her voice from a few seconds ago and it's kind of like a Smokes, yeah, like not even smokes, but smokes. And Patrick is like rude, and then he goes to take the photo, and he goes, "Hey, the light changed because it's all <laughs> dark in there now from the clouds." Yeah, and SpongeBob is and like there's lightning and stuff. And SpongeBob is like, "Uh, Patrick," and Patrick uh, finally takes the picture uh, right there as the clouds open and King Neptune descends from Atlantis, his palace in Atlantis, which is made up out of like real life photographs yeah. with some like drawn in coral and stuff. Yeah. But it's like very Greek uh, yeah. style architecture. Right. Um, there's columns old, and old domes. world. Yeah. Old world style, you know, um, King Neptune comes down and he's a beautiful green mermaid man with uh gold or long flowing red locks of hair and huge muscles jacked up to the gills. He's like, "Who freed the spatula from the grease?" Cuz, you know, you're obviously the best fry cook in the world if you did that. That's that's the deal. Yes, at last. He's been waiting for somebody to pull it that would be worthy yeah. of him. And he's like, SpongeBob is actually, you know, he's nervous. He's like, uh, I did Mr. Neptune, sir. And he like nervously smiles. Yeah. He's like Sponge SpongeBob SquarePants. He's um, like, ha ha, ha, oh, uh, fine jest. But you are just a little yellow sponge, a lowly yellow sponge at that. Yeah. And SpongeBob like the sides of his face start drooping down. And he's like, puny, insignificant, a commoner. And he like gets just Droop. more and more droopy and sad. Yeah, poor boy. And he says, therefore, you could never be the fry cook or god, to a god. And this is why it is funny. And he <laughs> continues to la yeah, laugh. And step aside as I tr seek the true fry, fry cook. And he starts to like... He starts to meander through the car crowd, and he's like, no, not you, not you, too short, whatever. He comes up to the hot dog guy, which yeah. is the same fish from the beach, the orange and blue fish, which I really like him. I think his design is cool. King Neptune says, a purveyor of foods. Yes, you must be my new fry cook. And the and guy's like, yeah, sorry, King Neptune. I don't make them. I just sell them. <laughs> and... Uh, He's like, well, who did it then? And he's like, he did. And he points to SpongeBob. SpongeBob's still up there, and the the spatula is in his hand, and it like twinkles. Like, SpongeBob doesn't need his hand out. <laughs> you can't buy him hot dog, man. <laughs> you can throw that out. I just wanted to say it. He's it not going to be part of your system. <laughs> uh, you must think SpongeBob is a joke. So, yeah, another episode with a hot dog vendor, yeah. right? The same guy, too. It's a different guy, though, because in the oh, last right. one, it was the octopus. But right. he was in there selling ice cream, yep. the, the same guy. That's funny. So then he's like, ha, it is even 
funnier a second time. <laughs> and then he like punches his fist onto the uh, uh, the hot dog stand. He bashes it. And he's like, you there, crustacean, talking about Larry. And he's like, who, me? And he's like, you have the physique of Atlas, talking about the god. Of course, and, not Hightower. Yeah. And, and, or Tony. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he does have a great physique. Yeah, yeah, Tony at least, or Phil. <laughs> Phil Atlas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Larry goes, huh, thanks, I work out. Yeah, like, he, obviously. he's pretty happy about that, right? And that's like the thing that like buff guys say. And I mean, they love to, yeah, right. it's as if it wasn't obvious. Right, and uh, I love this line, or this was really memorable, and I remember it. I remembered it as soon as it started to happen. The make poses with me. Yeah. And then. Ugh, ugh. Right. And then for the benefit of those with flash photography, they do small, tiny poses. Yeah. And then they even like bump into each other and they go body slam. <laughs> yeah. They're, and they're just palling around. They're being ripped throwing dudes. out like, yeah. straight up. Uh, and he's like, so surely you you pulled the spatula from the grease. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. no, that was SpongeBob. Yeah, and he's like, this joke has gone far enough. Where's my fry cook? And all of the people uh, scatter, all the people in the room, but Patrick is still there. And SpongeBob. And SpongeBob up atop the pile of grease. Certainly you, with your prodigious girth, would know who can flip a burger to suit a royal palate. Because hey, you're fat. Yeah. Hey, fatty. You probably eat a lot of food. You, you know. know who has the best burger because you're fucking fat, you fatso. Yeah. <laughs> you're just a fat kid. You're just a fatty, fat, 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 fat <laughs> kid. <laughs> Finally, a, a family guy yeah. reference I can make. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. It's, it's not a... <laughs> it's not a van. It's just a fat kid. Yeah, that dude. That's from eighth grade, dude. So you can't that's, park your. That van is on old the school. Board. That's like old school Family Guy. That's why I know it. I don't suppose you have any proof. Patrick shows him the picture because it's like apparently it's like a Polaroid type camera. It has right. a picture instantly. Yeah, yeah. He can immediately pull one out. Right? And it's of SpongeBob like holding it out with the clouds and stuff in the back. Right. And he's like, "Ha, this." This thing is unfit to even scrub the royal tail fin. And besides, it's not just... And now he's, like, starting to make excuses. He's like, it's not enough just to pull a spatula from a greasy griddle. You know, certainly there's other qualities that they must have. And SpongeBob immediately was like, like? Yeah, right. He's like, I did it, bro. Anything you need, I'm your man. And we see that as he's like... The real fry cook must be, you know, left-handed. Actually, I've got two. And SpongeBob holds his hands out, and they're both left hands. And I thought it was a joke at first that, like, oh, you know, you have to be left-handed. And he's like, well, I mean, I have both. Which is like, you know, I'm left-handed and I'm right-handed. I have both. But that's not the joke. When I watched these before, I guess I can never pause it to really understand that he actually has two left hands poor zachary this. because i always knew that but yeah that's okay because I've, I've had those moments too in the show where i have jokes completely wrong when know? we were watching it and he said it like i think i was saying it out loud too i have both because that's how i always remember you it thought of head. it as i've got a left and a right hand yeah but really it's i've got two left hands so yeah. i'm left handed and automatically I've, and i've mentioned that line before in other situations and i feel like people have understood where i'm like i never took it that actually way. i remember you saying that but i never took it as you thinking of it completely wrong yeah but that's okay zach don't beat yourself up <laughs> I don't care. I know. It's a joke. So then it's not a he's, big deal, obviously. He like snaps his fingers and he's like, dang, you know, he's like, uh, well, he also wears red underwear and SpongeBob pulls up red underwear he's and he's red. like, uh, no blue. And he also has he blue. Has he pulls up both. I love it. And, uh, he's, he's like, like, he's got his wallet contains and SpongeBob, like with big eyes, like big pupils. He's like. He's got his wallet, and then before he even continues that, he's like, no, his big toes are, and SpongeBob's got his his toes up in the air ready to take his shoe off yeah. to show him, and he's like, he has six, and then Patrick 
chimes in, he's the new royal fry cook, and you, zap. <laughs> yeah. Silence. Like, he's like, nobody's going to talk to me like that, yeah. you stupid Patrick. Starfish. Patrick gets fucking zapped to shit, and I love this line. He goes, is it hot in here or what? And, and he just falls. He's completely, like, black and charred. <laughs> he gets fucked by Neptune, and SpongeBob is upset about this, uh, rightly so, and says, you're not a king. You're a bully and a liar, uh, because he's lying about what it yeah. requires to be the fry cook. Um, Cause they just read it. He who is, pulls it out is worthy. Right. And he says, you think you have what it takes to be my Royal fry cook. I will prove you worth. I, I will prove your worthlessness. You shall be tested with a challenge. And Patrick chimes in. You shall be tested with a challenge. Bring it on. SpongeBob can handle it. Ouch! Your friend's arrogance will cost you dearly. There will be two challenges. Only two? What are two challenges to someone like SpongeBob? Three challenges! Three? <laughs> Three challenges are nothing. Might as well be 500 challenges. Enough! Settle for one. There will be but one challenge. You will face me in the ultimate cook-off. I will accept your challenge if you fix my friend. Ah, yes. The round one. I shall restore him. SpongeBob? SpongeBob? SpongeBob! Oh, there you are. How you feeling? Pretty good. Say, have you gotten taller? And call my man Zap Bran again. And Patrick goes, he's he's in a pile of dust now. And Patrick goes, he'll settle for one. Yeah, it's like literally a starfish shaped pile of black ash. Yeah. He's like, there will be but one challenge. You will face me in the ultimate cook off. And we get a great shot of Hans, essentially. It's a real-life hand, but it's colored green to look like Neptune. Yeah. And it has, like, his wristband on. As he's holding SpongeBob and telling him. And he's got SpongeBob inside of it, and that's awesome. And SpongeBob says, I will accept your challenge if you fix my friend. And he says, oh, yes, the round one. I shall restore him. And he zaps him. To make him normal again. And it looks like Patrick is just facing the wrong way. Yeah. And he's like, SpongeBob? SpongeBob. And he turns around and uh, it turns out Patrick's face is now on his posterior. Yeah. So it's not even on just his front. He's like completely on his backside. Like his buns. Yeah. Is where his face is. They're liter- his face literally appears on his shorts. Yeah. And he's like, oh, there you are. Uh, and SpongeBob's like, how, how are you feeling? He's like, pretty good. Say, have you gotten taller? Because now he's looking at him from a lot and lower. And it's great because, yeah, Patrick doesn't even realize that anything is different. Yeah. And his face is now on a butt. But instead of changing it, they're like, you know, they're just into this. Because he says, uh, and he pretty much is like, now you'll see the faith that may lie ahead. And he open, he gets like this cloud up and he's like. Um, for if you win this challenge, your reward will be great. Behold, and he opens the clouds. And then we see real life footage of Tom Kenny taking a shower. He turns around, sees the camera and is like, ah, and like covers himself up. Yeah, it's so good. Second time we've seen him in the shower in the show, by the way. The first being in Suds when SpongeBob washes yeah, his back. With him. Yeah. Yeah, he got to do a lot in this. Yeah. Especially with the Apache. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He got to do see. a lot of uh, live action shit as well, right? Yeah. And uh, he goes, whoopsie. Now behold. And he opens the clouds again, and it's the city of Alan- the Atlantis. Same, the, the same, same shot, shot of, it, of that the he palace. came out of. Right. Yeah. And he says, you will reside here in this glorious place. Cook only for me and be a god. And... Uh, says it's a prize worthy of Apollo. 
And he says, that's, and Patrick is like, that sounds pretty good. He says, but should you not succeed? You must give up fry cooking forever. What do you say? And SpongeBob says, his catchphrase. Yeah, it's his catchphrase. His catchphrase. I'm ready. I'm ready. Very Very well, then. To the Poseidome. Of course, a reference to the Greek god Poseidon, which is funny because Neptune is the Roman god of the sea. Poseidon is the Greek god of the sea. Of course. So, theoretically, he should not reference Poseidon, but it's okay because it's all undersea theme. Duh. Yeah, in this world, everybody's right with their mythology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's no, there's no right or wrong. So now we see the Poseidon Dome, and it's like, a, there's a giant wrestling ring in the middle of it, and there's huge uh, attendance of people in the Lots crowd. Lots of people there, yeah. And Mr. Krabs is like the host, the ring and, announcer. Yeah, he's on the mic, and he's, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ultimate cook-off. and everyone. Cheers, and he's like, telling him straight, all right, mates, first to a thousand patties wins. Shake hands. And then, of course, they shake, well, SpongeBob puts his arm out, right? They shake hands, and yeah. then he, Neptune zaps SpongeBob's arm off, and it just completely disintegrates to ash, and then his hand, like, we see his hand pop out again, and he just goes, may the best man win. Yeah. And this, is this the first time we've seen Sponge? No. SpongeBob's arm like grow back. We've seen arms do she, things. She Pearl uh like poisoned his arm that one time when it curled right, up, right. but we didn't see it pop it back like this. Right, right. I guess this is the first time we've seen him lose a limb and then immediately regrow it. Maybe not though. I feel like maybe we have seen that. It's getting to the point where we've seen so many episodes that it's like now it's like hard to remember exactly. Yeah. So Krabs is like a boxing. It's more related to boxing because he says, "Go back to your corners, and will the when the bell sounds, come out cooking yep. instead of swinging." You know. And Mr. Krabs, I love this. Says, "Don't worry, lad. I've got total confidence in you." He says that to SpongeBob, obviously. And then you see him run over to the the betting like booth. And he's like, put it all on Neptune. And he's got a fuckload of money that yeah. he's handing over. <laughs> yeah. And, he's about to get rich off. This. Yeah. And he's like, uh, and SpongeBob is, is doubting himself. SpongeBob's he, odds, honestly, if it was a real betting would be really low. Like oh, low if someone fuck. bet on him, they would make, they would have made a lot. They, of money. They'd be set for the next 12 generations probably. Yeah. So this Poseidon also takes the same currency as Bikini Bottom. Yeah. Even though it's Luckily, a godly land. Right, it's yeah. in it's assumedly in Atlantis. Yeah. Right? Um so And everybody's there. He like transports them there somehow. Right. Or All something. the Bikini Bottom people are there, yeah. right? I'm not good enough to cook in Atlantis, Patrick. I never should have taken the challenge. Don't give up your dreams, SpongeBob. People used to tell me, Patrick, you'll never amount to anything. You'll always have your head in the clouds. But just look at me now. Go get him, Tigers! And it's funny because instead of his head being where it is, it's lower. So it's he on did his the butt. complete opposite. His head is no longer in the clouds. It's now down in the shits. Literally. And he tells him, go get him, Tiger, which yep. is nice. I like that. Because the bell rings. And now, uh, now they're going to start making patties against each other. And they both have some very different techniques. Indeed. King Neptune takes all the shortcuts, basically. Also, I wanted to mention that people in the audience, there's people who are holding little banners, like pennants, that have an N on them. Right. It's like a collegiate-looking N. For Neptune. Yeah. And uh, Neptune summons up all of the... uh, Seahorses. Seahorses, and SpongeBob is, you know taking his time yeah the seahorses come down with uh the apron and neptune puts on the apron it's it has like scales and stuff on it and then spongebob what he just puts his hat on so it's like this is how he gets dressed and spongebob just puts his hat on and then it goes to the next thing neptune uh starts like you can see him open up like a hole in the the boxing ring mat 
and wheat grows up out of it, and then he zaps it, and it turns into buns, and right. SpongeBob is just like opening a package of buns. Right. Um, and then he summons the vegetables, and then he calls his swordfish friends. Yeah, so uh, he has all the vegetables, like the tomatoes, tomato, lettuce, onion. Yep, He's and they're just swirling too. I think they're swirling around in like the sky, like a lot of them. And then yeah. all the swordfish come and cut cut it up, slice all them nice. all up. It's all it all lands perfectly, you know, so he can easily prepare. Yeah, his and then patties. And then we see SpongeBob. He has a tomato that's like already cut, but he's like lining it up to get the perfect slice. And he slices it using the golden spatula. And he, uh, and it's so thin that you can see right through it. It's like a really thin slice of tomato. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is transparent. Um, and he's looking at it. King Neptune zaps all of his patties, uh, and he like creates a, uh, a grill, a grill. Yeah. And, He's like able to just flip them all instantly with his magic, and SpongeBob is rubbing sticks together to create his fire so he can cook. Yeah, and then it goes back to Neptune, and I remember this shot. It's like the patties in order are like flipping themselves in like yeah. a line as if they're doing the wave. Yeah, across right, the grill, right? A huge grill, right? He's cooking a thousand at a time. Yeah, um, and SpongeBob is, you know, wait is. He's got like a little frying pan or whatever above the fire and he's cooking his little patty, just yeah. one. You and know? I think he even like what does he like look at his watch? He's like, Come Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. He's kinda like, Oh man, this is not Yeah, it's time taking efficient. a while. Yeah. It's whoever makes the most patties wins and I'm not doing a good job. Right, right. And uh S- King Neptune assembles all of his patties together, uh, just magically, like, in the air. And it's making a gigantic pyramid. Yeah, they stack up in a pyramid form. And uh, at this point, we see SpongeBob uh, put his little pickles down on the patty. Yep, and then he puts... This was very memorable for me. Of course. He puts two eyes in a mouth, uh, like a smiley face, in ketchup on both of the pickles then takes a piece of cheese and tucks it over gently, like right over the pickles. and Like he's putting them to bed. Right, and then he says, he pulls out a book and goes, once upon a time, and then it's cut off. But I just want to say, this would be a bad burger. So you cooked it. You When you cook a burger, you're supposed to put the cheese on a little bit of yep. time, yep. get it together. Also, there's only... there's. Only ketchup. I mean, there's no mustard. Maybe not yet. But then there's only two pickles, and they're both on the same side of the burger. And That's the ketchup is only on the pickles. Too. Yeah. It, and pickles are uh, slimy. They would, like, it would wipe right off. You're right. Um. Anyways, like I said, he was immediately interrupted by Neptune, who's laughing, and the burgers are just raining down, stacking up. Um. As I said, uh, oh, he also does kiss the pickle before he reads them the story. Right. He reads them the story, kisses them, and... Yep, so Neptune's burgers are piling up into a pyramid, and then SpongeBob puts the top bun on one Krabby Patty, and then there's a score card in the back, too, that's just zooming by. You can't even read the numbers. the scoreboard, yeah. It's a very Space Jam-esque... You know, they yeah, do it the same gag in is, Space right. Jam, yeah. where it's like, this is getting out the of hand. The points are going up so fast, right? Yeah. Like, the thing, the scoreboard can't even keep up. But when Neptune's gets to a thousands, SpongeBob goes to one, and there's like a, like a duck noise. Yeah. And then, I win, says King Neptune, and people cheers. He makes fun of SpongeBob for being a baby, and he gives out his patties to everyone in the crowd, and they all start to eat them. And as they begin to eat them, they all pretty much immediately spit them out because they taste like shit. And Fred's there, too. Fred is there. And uh, yeah, Fred is there. And he was in the he was in the museum when Neptune first came too. sure. Uh, And Neptune is like, fools, have no have you no taste buds? There's nothing wrong with these. They're delicious. And he sniffs it. And and he's he's like, like, ooh. "Ooh, And then the crowd is like, eat it. They're. 
they're getting him to eat it. They're all trying. Like, yeah, they're like, why don't you try it? You, you know, it's yeah, not fair. Yeah, it. Why don't you eat it? Eat it. Eat it. And he, like, goes to take a bite, and he can't. And he's like, okay, mine's no good. But what makes you think his will be any better? And he grabs SpongeBob's only patty that he made. Give me that. And he takes a bite, and he finishes it, like, immediately. And he's like, hmm. Why, it tastes so good? I think I'd like to try it a second time. And then using his godly powers, he regurgitates the burger back into burger form. Perfect form, right? Yeah, and And then eats eats it it again. again. And then we get a shot of the crowd that's all like, oh, it's so gross. And I always, like, when I was a kid, I was like, that would be sick to be able to do. Uh, to be able to eat things twice. Or even just to eat something and then regurgitate it instantly without it, like, you know, ruining everything. Where you're like, oh, man, I just ate this thing, but I didn't actually eat it. <laughs> okay. You know, could you imagine? Uh, it'd be weird. Like, oh, I just ate this ice cream, but now I don't have to, like, work it off. Like, yeah, it's just gone, I guess, but I did taste right, it. Right, Um Anyway, King Neptune is like, okay, yours is superior. Therefore, I concede to you. SpongeBob SquarePants, you win. And they all cheer the, the crowd. And they continue to wave their little N flags, even though they're cheering for SpongeBob. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, SpongeBob and Patrick are dancing around. And they're all excited to go to Atlantis. And King Neptune's laughing. They're holding them. in hands, holding hands, like going in a circle, like ring around the rosy. And they're like... We're going to Atlantis. We're going to Atlantis. And SpongeBob notices King Neptune laughing and it's like, what's so funny? And he says, and he looks at Patrick and says, that repulsive thing in my palace. And he's like, what? My, you know, my friend can't come and the rest of my friends can't come. And he's like, of course not. And he says, the only friend you need is the Royal Grill. And Patrick is like all sad. He's crying, wiping his tears. Which his face is still on the bottom, so he's like his wiping butt. his butt. And he says, it was nice knowing you, buddy. And then he walks off screen. Mr. Krabs walks on screen, crying. And he's like, I know Mr. Krabs. I'll miss you too. And Mr. Krabs keeps walking off, and he just goes, I lost me bet. He's just sad that he lost his bet, not the guy who and pretty much saved his restaurant. You lost your fry cook. That it's it. You're fucked, Mister Krabs. Your life is fucked up now. Like it was good until five minutes ago. Now it is completely fucked. Yep. And Neptune like conjures up these suitcases and is like, "Come on, SpongeBob, grab your things. Let's go." And he also conjures up a tandem bicycle. And yeah. he like, uh, we're going to Atlantis, and he dings the bell a couple times. But SpongeBob, being like the brat that he is, instead of going, he he starts to cry and goes, "I don't want to go." Right, lots of crying in these few episodes. <laughs> yeah, teaching kids to be whiny. whiny bitches. Yeah, to get what they want. <laughs> yeah, I learned that early on. He's like, "Well, it's too late now. I can't live." Without your burgers, like <laughs> you done goofed. Another like, now, day cannot pass without yeah, me I will, eating your burgers. I will kill myself if I cannot <laughs> have some of your burgers. He's like, you're gonna be a god, and you're gonna like it. And he zaps SpongeBob, and he has like, I love this image. This would be my other image of the episode if we could have two on the same thing. It's of him like he's got big muscles. He's wearing a toga and his like giant pecs are hanging out now. SpongeBob is ripped. Yeah, it'd be a good picture. Yeah, but he's still really short. But he's like, ooh, maybe we do have a problem he because he's me. like, oh, you look like a goofy guy. Yeah, he might. He reminds me kind of of like Hercules when he's young, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has the flower thing around his head as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever it is, uh, I don't know. The headpiece. The he- the head it's piece. not flowers. It's more like leaves. plants. Yeah. Leaves, yeah. Flowers would be a womanly thing. So, but SpongeBob, you should just play this because his voice is great. Wait, Neptune, I have another idea. Then, cut to the Krusty Krab. Yep, Patrick coming in. 
giving one of his most patented, his patented lines. He goes, good morning, Krusty Crew. Yeah, everything looks like it's back to normal. Yep. Patrick's face is still on his butt. Mm. Yeah. Good morning, Krusty Crew. Hi, Patrick. What do you have? Oh. Uh... Can you excuse me? The accursed stove has burnt my finger. Feel thine own wrath, stove. <laughs> what did I tell you about using your powers, trainee? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect patties are made with love, not magic. Feel thine own wrath, stove, and he zaps the stove yeah, and laughs it, at it. And the stove doesn't do anything because it's... Obviously. Yeah. It's a stove. And SpongeBob says, what did I tell you about using your powers, trainee? And Neptune, embarrassed, says, perfect patties are made with love, not magic. Yep, and that's the that's end of the, the episode. That's the end of the episode right there. The lesson here being uh, quality over quantity and um, love over power. I think I think you could even say just don't be a dick is kind of the, the moral. theme of a lot of them. Yeah. He got the Squidward treatment. He was the squid of this episode. Yeah, right, for sure. And uh, before we forget, I wanted to say this King Neptune is not the same King Neptune as From in the, the movie. movie. Uh, this one has a full head of hair and uh, doesn't wear a robe and or a, a crown. Well, I guess he wears a crown, but it's more of like a headpiece than it is a crown. It's not like a crown like the Neptune from the movie wears, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of interesting. And I remember the first time I watched the movie, I can actually recall renting it from Blockbuster. That I, I don't think I saw it in theaters. I'm pretty sure I rented it, and that was the first time I saw it. Oh, wow. And I, didn't, I don't think I saw it in theaters either. And I just remember that thinking what is up with that Neptune? And then I was like, Neptune has a daughter that was never in the show. Like, right. I, I feel like I remember thinking that like, and even obviously it's the movie. So a lot of things are going to be different, but even the whole goofy goober thing at first, I remember being like, this was never in the show. They act right. like it was a thing forever and it's not like, yeah. but you know, now years later I've accepted the movie into my lexicon and I'm okay <laughs> with it. Um, so I didn't know this, but the guy who plays Neptune in the movie is Jeffrey Tambor. Oh, okay. Cool. Pop pop. Yeah, I know I know I know who he is. George sure. Senior. Yeah. Yeah. Pop pop. Daddy horny Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I probably my favorite line from him. <laughs> yeah. I um, remember there's one part where he just has like a flashback and he's like, you know, maybe it's not all so bad and then it's like Daddy horny, Michael. Yeah, right. Um, also, that's, that's one of my favorite lines. Side note: sure. I never knew that Scarlett Johansson was Mindy, his daughter. Oh, okay, that that's cool. And yeah. Alec Baldwin is Dennis. The like, who's Dennis? He's oh, the dude the with nerd? the bandana and stuff, right? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Great episode. Loved it. I would give this one a perfect score too. Super memorable. Super important to everything. Showing us just how great of a guy SpongeBob is and what a great fry cook he is. He rocks. Yeah. I would say that the boots that Mr. Krabs ate were worn by the greatest fry cook of all time. And that was SpongeBob. And, you know, if you gave SpongeBob one chance to rock your socks off, he would do it. And he, he did this time. He had one chance and he rocked everyone's socks off. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> so then the demon code prevents SpongeBob from declining a rock off challenge. And anyway, great. Yeah, I agree, Zach. Great episodes. Uh, super awesome. Uh, April Fools, like I said, uh, was really memorable for me. The Neptune one, also quite memorable. And even though not a lot of like great lines or dialogue come out of the Neptune episode, just the episode itself, the journey that you're taken on is very memorable um, and enjoyable. And yeah, uh, I think that about does it. Yeah. So 
Next week we have this is the first time I actually looked and realized next week is the last two episodes of season one. You are correct. Hookie and Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy two. Oh That's crazy. We're already getting into season two. I don't know. Should we take a break? It's like a season thing. I don't know, man. It's Maybe we could. Oh, geez. These episodes are getting so good. I can't even stand it afterward. Looking at season oh, two. Oh, my God. It's going to be oh, crazy. Our it's lives. Gonna, it's going to pop off. It's going to be but, so um, great. But potentially we'll take a break. But in the meantime. I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Podcasts usually don't do that, I guess. But. I guess not. But we could, theoretically. But Yeah, anyway. or we should do like a special like unrelated episode. Yeah, in the meantime something. or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway. um. I have been Alexander Beardsley, also known as Ashton Waganda on the internet. That is spelled A-S-H-T-O-N-W-A-G-A-N-D-H-A. You can find me all over the place. Uh, you can find us at facebook.com slash Stripe Sweater Productions. You can email us at Stripe Sweater Productions at gmail.com. Um, we also have a Patreon now that we have not fully like gone crazy with yet. But if you are a big supporter of our podcast, go ahead and check us out at patreon.com slash striped sweater. And there are a couple different tiers that will get you a couple different things. Uh, check it out, um, you know, and we would love it if you supported us, if you feel so inclined. That would mean a lot, um, really. So thanks for listening. Zachary? I am Zach Main. Totally red underscore Zach. Mystified. M I S T A F Y E D. Um, I just want to say you can find us also on YouTube. Um, obviously, anywhere you get your podcasts and places you don't get your podcasts, we're all over the place. Um, we have a Twitter, but until I can find time to really commit to it, there's really nothing there and nobody follows us. And we only have one tweet that only I retweeted, and um, that's that. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's pretty much all of our plugs, right? So please do. Diddy did, did it. <laughs> please to. Please do, leave us a review or send us a note. That would be so dope. Um. Yeah. You, yeah. Give us requests of other things to do. Make us go out of our way to record extra things for. Your listening pleasure or not. I mean, if you don't like it, then uh, sorry, guys. Shut us up. Yeah. You know what? Say something about it. Cut us a nice promo and send it to us. That would be real sweet. If Actually, we got like a fan that was like, you listen here, Sponge, <laughs> you stupid SpongeBob podcast. I'm sitting here listening to you every week and I can't stand your guts. <laughs> You know, something like that. It would be I, pretty fun. I would like that a lot. So, uh, And please. then we'll send you one back. It'll yeah, be good. We'll fucking shard on your face, and then, too. And then we'll meet you in the ring. I'm talking to you, Mitch Hewitt. <laughs> Mitchell. Drizako. I'm coming for you. No, I don't know if that... Lil Dicky. Listens. Yeah, Lil Dicky. He doesn't listen at all. He's al He always shares our shit, but he, I don't think he's ever listened to Lil it. Lil Dicky's mom. I know she listens. Lil Dicky's mom, shout out to you. Yeah. You're the best. Thank <laughs> you. Nolan, the young boys. That's pretty much the, the new young crew. Huh? Yeah, Drizzy and Noli and, and Dicky. Hey, Lil Dicky's mom, I know you're out there. I see you, girl. So that's it. Uh, now we get to the most important question of the day. Oh, wow. I forgot about that. <laughs> what am I going to do with a drunken sailor? Who is he played by? Well, the last time was Popeye. Well, no, the last time wasn't Popeye. The last time, what did, oh, we asked the Tom boys. Tom Dirt. Oh, the last one was Tom Dirt. Um, what's your greatest Tin Meadows memory? What do you know him best from? Uh, just Semi -pro? Saturday, Saturday Night Live in general. Because he was on Saturday Night Live for like 20 years. Okay. The Sailor. The Sailor is being played by a man who is known for either his own alcoholism or has done it 
has used it in movies. Robert Downey Jr. He's a drunken sailor. He's arrogant. Uh, he's pissed at you. You. Uh, he's waking you up. Um, and he, he's looking for an infinity stone or and something. And he's mad at me. Yeah, he's mad at you, and he's got a gun in his hand. Oh, shit. Via um, Charlie Bartlett? What do I What do? I, do? Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm like, yo, don't shoot, dude. Like, that's... It's like, a- what, you think I'm just not going to shoot you because you tell me not to shoot you? Um, please, like, I'll help you. I'll help you do whatever it is you want to do. Just don't kill me, please. Listen here, don't you know I'm the smartest sailor in, on Earth? <laughs> I'm the smartest man who's ever existed. And I have a gun. You, What do you, you think that you can just talk me out of killing you I'm in not, your sleep? I'm not trying to talk you out of shit. I just don't want to die, sir. Oh, a likely story. <laughs> I'm supposed to believe you don't want to die, but I'm here with a gun. <laughs> You've gotten yourself into quite the predicament, young man. And then I guess I just die, apparently. Man, rip. So uh, that does it for us here at the Stripes Rudder Podcast. We've been the Bikini Bottom Bad Boys, Zachary and Alexander. Best friends, resident tough guys. That's us. Totally radicals. Good company. Tiny little nuts. Yeah, we're just two tiny little nuts. In a sack together. Yeah, in a wall. We're walnuts. Walnuts, peanuts, pineapples, shells. Bye, everyone. Grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells. Uh, Oh, uh. yeah. If he shoots you, it's going to hurt.